Hi, I'm Aaron Kaplan, the author of An Integrated Approach to Constitutional Law. This casebook is the result of my experiences representing clients in constitutional cases and teaching courses in constitutional law. I'm confident that you will like the book and learn a lot from it. However, you should know at the outset that this book is organized differently than most casebooks. So this video explains those differences and explores why the unique organization of this book has proven to be so effective. Traditionally, many constitutional law casebooks divided topics into separate silos, like the silos you see in this picture. On this farm, one silo is for corn, one silo is for soybeans, and they are completely separate from each other. Over the course of a semester organized around a silo approach, you may study one topic at a time. You'll have a unit on regulating commerce, a unit on the spending power, a unit on judicial review of legislation, a unit on presidential powers, and so on and so on. Sometimes if a single court opinion deals with more than one topic, it might be separated into different chapters. The silo approach has some problems. The most important one is that this is not what constitutional problems look like in the real world. To decide any one constitutional case, a court might have to consider legal doctrines from several different silos and also consider how those doctrines interact with each other. Moreover, your final exam will probably not be broken up into silos either. Most teachers try to construct a factually realistic problem that can only be understood by using more than one tool at a time. So overall, the silo approach is not a good way to understand the big picture of what's going on. Here's another metaphor that you might find helpful. Reading a book that is structured with the silo approach is sort of like downloading a picture from the internet one row at a time. Eventually, you see the whole picture, but at any one moment, your focus is solely on the new information coming in, pixel by pixel. Let's look at that again. Now pay attention to when in the process you finally start to understand the big picture. Another way to download online images is to quickly present the big picture first without attempting to present all the details. Then in successive waves the picture gets sharpened up. And this is how most browsers download images today. So let's look at that one again. Notice how the picture is blurry at the beginning, but the overall logic is immediately understandable, and the details tend to be about what you expect them to be. Now let's transfer these ideas to the structure of a constitutional law course. In particular, imagine that you are one month into the course. Which of these two images will help you learn the material better going forward? Research into the psychology of learning shows that image B will be much more helpful. It's true that not everything in image B is perfectly sharp yet, but having a sense of the big picture gives you a structure that you can add new information to. Image A shows one part of the picture in greater detail but you have no structure on which you can fit new information. In light of these ideas, the idea of the book structure is to give you a big picture at the outset and saving the details of particular doctrines for later. As it happens, the most intuitive way to present that big picture is to survey constitutional disputes in the country's history in the order they occurred. The material in Part 1 that is presented chronologically will introduce you to all of the central ideas that are necessary to participate in today's constitutional law conversations. Let me be candid with you about something. Some students have reported to me that during Part 1, some of the concepts feel a little fuzzy. And you know what? That's completely normal. Some of the early cases raise about as many questions as they answer. If you feel like there's more to the story that you don't know yet, that's a good sign. It shows that you're curious, and it shows that you're going to be ready for more detail later on when it gets presented. Many of those same students who say they felt fuzzy at the beginning also told me that by halfway through the semester, they felt like they understood this class better than they did many of their other courses. 
Now, this start slow but quickly finish fast is because the big picture that you learn in part one makes it easier for you to understand the details that get presented later. Parts two and three are organized by topic. Specifically, part two revisits and updates the part one concepts involving the structure of government. And part three revisits and updates the part one concepts involving individual rights. Notice that I said parts two and three revisit some earlier concepts. Revisiting ideas turns out to be very educationally important. A lot of psychological research shows that people learn material better when they're exposed to it on multiple occasions, separated in time. So seeing an idea three times over the course of the semester will give you greater mastery of that subject than if you saw it just once as part of a concentrated silo. Let me describe some of the laboratory research that demonstrates this. One experiment evaluated two different ways of teaching students how to recognize art created by different 20th century painters. Two groups of students were shown the same material, but in different orders. The first group was taught about painters in silos. One unit was all Picasso. Another unit was all Miro. Another unit was all Leger. Another approach involved what education researchers call interleaving. The students saw the works of the painters on more than one occasion. The painter-by-painter painter silos were broken apart, and the works were interleaved with each other. Then came the tests. Which students did better on an exam asking them to identify painters? The interleaved group performed much better on these tests. They did better at remembering who painted the pictures they had seen already. And they were also better at judging the artist of works that they had not yet seen before. So somehow interleaving helped them better understand both what each painter was about and the differences between them. So many, many experiments of this kind show that interleaving produces better learning. But here's the funny part. In the early stages, interleaving might feel harder. You feel like you're switching gears, and you're frequently looping back, retrieving items from memory, and working with them again. But all the studies show that this leads to better comprehension, better long-term memory, and better test performance. So I think you'll see that this also works when applied to constitutional law.